church family. I'm going to invite you to stand as we celebrate God's goodness.
doesn't matter what we're facing, but we choose to praise you in Jesus' name. Amen. You can grab a seat. Well, welcome this morning to Community Presbyterian Church. It's so great to have you in the house of the Lord, declaring his greatness, his goodness. We're excited with great anticipation for what God wants to do here on January the 15th. Man, January's rolling by. It's cold outside, but the presence of God is warm in here, so we're excited to see what God wants to do. If it is your first time, we do have a Connect card. It's located right in front of you. It looks like this. It's blue and white. If you don't mind at any point in our gathering filling out some information, if it indeed is, is your first time, we would greatly appreciate it. Uh, you can drop it in two spots. Number one is the offering plates as they circulate a little later on in our gathering, or the clear plastic box located at the back. Uh, we want to welcome our, our viewers online as well. We're so glad that you're here, enjoying God's presence wherever you're watching from. And our prayer this morning is that you would just engage with, with the body of Christ that's here because you're part of us even when you're watching online. A couple of things. Pastor is uh, continuing the series, Basic Training. We're in part two, and I've been encouraged in part one and so delighted to hear about part two and, and some practical elements that we can use just to advance God's kingdom forward in our own lives. So excited to hear a little later on. Uh, one announcement we did uh, make reference to last week, it pertains to young families, if you've got some kids or maybe you're a single parent with some kids. On Saturday, uh, January the 28th, we do have a family skate. It's at 9.45 a.m. until 1 p.m. And we would love to have you come on out and join us. Uh, all the details, you can go to compress.org, our website, and you can get filled in on, on the, the location and all of those good things. But we would like you to RSVP, so if you could call the office uh, Monday to Friday, the office is open. Ask for, we would love to hear from you and just mark down that you are coming. But again, a great way to connect with one another and build relationship. At this time, let's stand up, maybe loosen up a little bit, shake around and get warm a bit and welcome somebody to church.
Well, we're going to dive back into worship in just a few moments, but I thought we would open this portion of, of worship with a scripture reading from, uh, from the book of Psalm, chapter 145, and, and this is a psalm of praise from David. It simply says, I will exalt you, my God, the King. I will praise your name forever and ever. Every day I praise you, and I extol your name forever and ever. Great is the Lord, and most worthy of praise. His greatness no one can fathom. One generation commends your works to another. They tell of your mighty acts. They speak of the glorious splendor of your majesty, and I will meditate on your wonderful works. They tell of the power of your awesome works, and I will proclaim your great deeds. They celebrate your abundant goodness and joyfully sing of your righteousness. It's the word of the Lord. Let's stand up and just enter into his presence if you can right now. Just maybe if you feel comfortable, raise your hands. If not, that might look something different for you. Just reflecting internally of the greatness of God. Man, he's here in this place. He's here to meet with you. So God, we just declare that you are great. You are mighty. You have a plan, purpose, and destiny and a hope for each person. Father, how can we not stand here in this moment today, January the 15th, and extend an attitude of praise, a heart of praise, a heart of thanksgiving for what you've done and what you continue to do? God, we worship you. You are great. Come on, let's just continue in his presence this morning. full of gratitude and praise, just like in the Psalm 145, we will sing of the greatness of God. Yeah. 
Uh, Heavenly Father, it feels so intimate right now with you as we just think about your amazing presence and powerful being, Almighty God, creator of everything, and yet here we are in this very personal moment with you where you use all of how great thou art to release grace into our lives. Where you take your amazing, just this awesome God and you show it in the way you forgive and restore and reconnect us to you. And it's just humbling to be in your presence right now. I'm struggling to find the words, just so overwhelmed with just that amazing grace. Lord, it's, uh, it's exciting to be in your presence today. It's the middle of the first month of the year. Already time is just moving on, and we were hoping for a, a new me and the new year, and we want to just keep pursuing that, that fresh relationship, that next level with you that you invite us into. That, that new calling to, to reach out and, and, and extend your, your hand to those who need a touch from you, your word to those who need hope, your presence to those who feel alone, your grace that fills in all the cracks of our lives where we're struggling and broken and hurting. There you are just to, to be our God in such an intricate way, such a powerful way. You bring a wholeness, not just to, to our hearts, but to our lives, to the way we think and the way we live and what we say and how we approach the people around us, the way we direct our finances and our schedules and calendars. You just take over our lives with your goodness. And there we are, the recipients of this, this incredible God and also invited to extend this awesome love to the people who cross our path. So today, Lord, we are just in awe of you. And, and, and Father, for, for our church, we're asking that everybody who's gathered here today would receive from you any healing that they need, whether it's a physical healing, a relational fix, um, you know, a calling restored, whatever it might be, Lord. We want you to step in and, and uh, bring your salvation. But we don't want to merely receive from you. We want to make sure that we're extending it to other people. And Lord, today we want to stand up as prayer warriors and make sure we have other people on our prayer list. Make sure that everybody in our sphere of influence is, we're taking spiritual responsibility for them. We're praying for them, standing in the gap for them lifting them up, fighting for them in prayer. So Lord, empower us so that we're not just singing zippity doo da because we're blessed, but that we are moving with an intentional focus on releasing your presence, your power, your love. And Father, as we come to church today, we do want an anointing on our ministry not just everybody, but everything we're trying to do, that we would bring you glory. And Lord, we're also asking for this. We're asking, my Lord and my God, that you would hear our prayers for the rest of the world, that you would step in across the globe and just heal those who are being persecuted, that you would cause people to rise up and start spreading your gospel whether it's folks dealing with the war in the Ukraine or the atheism in Europe or the persecution in Africa, that at all times we are hearing about it, praying about it, and anticipating your movement because that's what you've empowered us to be as prayer warriors. So Lord, today, as we step into your presence, we want to take a quiet personal moment right now just to speak to you from the heart.
Uh, Father, thank you for hearing these prayers. Thank you for answering these prayers. Thank you for being almighty God who's personally involved in every detail of our life. It's in the name of Jesus Christ we pray. Amen. Uh, welcome to church today. I'm so glad that you're here. You know, you got a bulletin today, and there's all kinds of fun stuff for you to check out. We've got different moves taking place in our church, different places to serve, different Bible studies to, to go to. Following this service, we're going to have a Bible study in the St. Andrew's room about uh, the Apostle Paul and, and what he wrote. So if you decide you're looking for a little more uh, content and spiritual growth, we're just going to let you go down that hallway and, and, and find the St. Andrew's room. But uh, one of the main things we want to say today is uh, <clears throat> we are interested in launching into a, a, a prayer ministry where people who are struggling, uh, we're putting the word out so that you can rise up and lift up those who are fighting off cancer, lift those who are looking for work, lift up those who are in battles. Uh, the Lord invites us to, to be that person that, that stands in the gap for somebody else, and so um, in the encouragement from the pastor, I'm inviting you to be a prayer warrior. And so uh, read this and, and discern whether you want to be a part of our prayer warrior team. And then go ahead and contact Astrid in the office. And we're going to put you into motion, put you to spiritual work. And we're going to see something exciting happening in our, our church. Okay, so uh, just want to put that out there for you. I'm going to take the offering right now, and again, I'm just still in awe of the way you supported us, the way that you helped us meet the budget, the way that you are enabling us to be aggressive as we try to reach the kingdom of God. I think as we came out of 2022, something that we realized was just how far we can reach, how many people we could touch, just how much of the gospel message is available for us to distribute to the folks around us. And so that's inspiring us to step forward and, and move in that direction. And so that's why we're taking the offering today. We want more people to meet Jesus. We want to make sure that our church is, is being innovative and, and, and able to, to reach this culture around us and touch the hearts that don't know Jesus, to encourage those who do, and for all of us to be the people of God. So as the offering plates circulate, whether you're saying, thank you, Lord, for the grace that I don't deserve, or you're saying, Lord God, here am I, use me, uh, let's participate in this special moment between you and God. Amen. For centuries, Christians have been known as men and women of prayer people who lift up their cares and concerns to the Father in heaven. Why is that? Why do we pray? We pray because it aligns the mind of the Christian with the will of Christ. We pray because Jesus commanded us to pray at all times, in all places. We pray because the God who knows all and sees all, hears all. We pray because it is the blessed link between human weakness and divine omnipotence. We pray, not because it is some religious rule, but because the Lord is God. We pray because it is the most simple and practical way to say, I am not God. We pray, not because it is a burden to us, but because it liberates us from all other burdens. We pray because it is exactly what the devil does not want us to do. We pray, because God can do more in five seconds than we can do in five years. We pray because it is the one thing that supersedes everything else on our to-do list today. We pray because we are too busy not to pray. We pray because somewhere, sometime, someone prayed for us. And we pray because the greatest tragedy of the Christian life is not unanswered prayer, but unoffered prayer. Prayer is powerful. That's why we pray. Guess what we're talking about today? We are in the second installment of 
basic training. Last week we talked about the need for you and I to read the manual so we know what the instructions are. And today we're going to talk about our communication with the general, the commander of the Lord's armies, Jesus Christ. And, and I think there's this beautiful passage, you know, you're going to talk about prayer and which one do you choose. And how about Mark chapter 11? Hear the word of God. And Jesus answered them, have faith in God. Truly I say to you, whoever says to this mountain, be taken up and thrown into the sea and does not doubt in his heart, but believes that what he says will come to pass, it will be done for him. Therefore I tell you, whatever you ask in prayer, believe that you have received it and it'll be yours. And whenever you stand praying, forgive if you have anything against anyone, so that your Father also, who is in heaven, may forgive your trespasses. This is the word of the Lord. Well, today we're going to talk about communication with God, and that is called prayer. Prayer, it's, it's, it's talking to the Lord. Now, by the way, prayer was his idea. Okay? He's the one who created this mechanism between you and him. It was his desire that you do life with God. When he was in the Garden of Eden, it was God who came looking for Adam. Where are you? Okay? Uh, he delights when, when we engage him. He wants to communicate with us. And, and when we go to prayer, it, it first of all enables us to know who God is. That's the primary thing that happens in prayer. We go there, and as he answers prayer, as he moves in our hearts, as he makes scriptures come alive, we get to know who God is and, and what that relationship with him was all about. However, when we pray, there's another component. Prayer moves the hand of God. Okay, when we pray, we can move mountains. When we pray, we should expect that what we lift up is going to be given to us. And, and, and so, you know, many people, they only pray when they need something. And, well, that's a smart move. However, I, I feel that when you only pray when you need something, you're missing the friendship that the Lord has made available to you. I will say that in my prayer life, that's probably the most uh, desirable aspect, just stepping into his presence you know, I usually have an agenda, but still, you know, I, I, sometimes I forget my agenda. I could just get overwhelmed with who he is and, and connecting to him. And, and a lot of times, new Christians or even longtime Christians will say, I, I don't know what to pray about. And I'll say this, you should pray about your daily life. Okay? He is interested in the details of your life. Everything about you is important to him. There's this, this statement in Psalm 139.3. He is intimately acquainted with all your ways. I mean, do, do you feel just how deeply involved that God is in your life? He wants us to bring our needs to him. In, in Matthew 6, you know, give, he, he talks about we, we, we need uh, food, we need clothing, we need, you know, different things. And, and Jesus says, that's the right move, bring it to him. However, in Psalm 37, 4, he says he'll give us the desires of our hearts. So it's not only what you need, it's the desires of your heart. God is the source for you and me, and therefore you need to bring things to him. Uh, lots of folks will say to me, and I mean lots of folks, well, I don't bother God with what I need because he's too busy taking care of big ticket items. Well, actually, he delights in you, and he wants you to bring whatever is going on in your life to him. He's big enough to handle everything especially you and whatever is going on in your life. And, and Jesus teaches us to get specific in our prayer life. You know, some people throw up a blanket prayer, Lord, you know, bless me and guide my steps. And it's a good prayer. It's a little bit vague, okay? It, it, there's a moment in, in Luke chapter 11 where Jesus tells a story about this guy that comes to his friend's house at midnight and says, hey, I have an unexpected guest I need three loaves, and Jesus says, even though the guy's not going to get up because he's a friend, he's going to get up because you keep, he keeps knocking on the door, and he's going to give him everything he wants. Don't you think your heavenly Father will how much more give to you 
what you need in the Holy Spirit, he adds there. Okay? Um, get specific. I need three loaves. You know, go ahead and say, this is what's going on in my life. This is what I'm facing. This is what I'm struggling with. This is what I'm afraid of. Go ahead and, and, and let the Lord know because then he's going to step in and, and take that which is going on within you and start to bring about healing and, and bring about the goodness that he has in mind for you. You know, this one little boy, he was misbehaving, so his mom sent him to his room. So he stayed there for a while. Then he came out and said, Mom, I thought about the situation and I prayed. And she was delighted that he prayed. She said, well, did you ask the Lord to forgive you and help you to be a better little boy? He said, no, I, I asked the Lord to help you put up with me. Okay. <laughs> now, now, sometimes we pray for things that probably are not exactly what the Lord wants, but it's in that conversation that he'll say, well, that's funny, however... This is what I really want from you. This is what I want to bring to you. This is the adjustment I want to make. That is what happens when we're in conversation with him. And, and I want you to know the prayer is not just a, a wish list. You know, we, we don't pray so that God will see things from our perspective. No, we pray so that we'll grasp his perspective. You know, I had an issue with somebody, and I was stewing about how I was going to maneuver in that situation. And so I thought, well, let me ask God. And he said, well, I got an idea. Matthew 18, I forgave you all that debt. Shouldn't you forgive another? You're like, oh, that's a great idea. You see, it's in prayer. He'll go ahead and say, this is my heart. This is the way I want you to operate. And that's... The, the beauty of prayer, God interacting with your life. Now, in Mark chapter 6, it says God knows what we need before we ask, and so people will say, then why do we ask? If he already knows, why do we have to bother him about it? Because God's not just Santa Christ. Yes, he is your provider, but he has a goal in mind in prayer, and that's to create a relationship with you. That's so that you'll come to understand his agenda and, and, and developing the friendship that, that he would like to enjoy with you. And, and I think it's kind of empowering to realize that God, God already knew that you were going to blow it that time, and he was bringing to you the grace you needed, the forgiveness that, 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 that you needed badly. He knew ahead of time you were going to have that bad moment, and he brought you forgiveness. He also knows the challenges that you're going to face. And therefore, you'll see him maneuvering in your situations, ready to empower you, ready, ready to guide you. And, and, and friends, listen to Jeremiah 29, 11. I know the plans I have for you, plans for welfare, to give you a future and a hope. And you know, this is one of those trite Bible statements that you see on a plaque, but, but I want you to understand he has a plan. His goodness is intended for you. He's got a future in mind and hope that he wants to inspire you with. This is what the dynamics between you and God when you pray. And, and this is helpful because God promises to answer us, okay? Which means you have three options. Yes, no, and wait. Now, we love yes. That's my favorite. Lord, can I have this? Yes. Boom. Thank you. Then there's no. And you and I have to adjust, okay? He, I know he's a good God. I know he's aware of things in my world that I'm not aware of. Uh, maybe he wants to use my life in this situation in order to, to show his glory or to be a testimony to somebody. So, you know, we have to anticipate that God is for me, he has a plan for me, and no is just not his will. But the most exciting answer is wait, you see, wait is an invitation to partner with God as he goes to work in your life. You know, he comes alive, and, and what's so fun is, you know, we want that thing, but it's the journey where we learn his personality, his ways, his, his will, see his power, come to be in awe of him. 
That's what happens on the journey to the destination. And then we finally get there, and what we experience with God means more to us than him finally giving us what we asked for. And prayer is the place where you and I acquire wisdom. Wisdom so that we'll know how to fight temptation. Wisdom when we're facing important decisions. You know, in James 1.5, it says this, If anyone lacks wisdom, let him ask God who gives generously to all. I quote James 1.5 regularly. Lord, help me figure this out. Lord, empower me to, to, to do this right. Lord, give me the understanding in this, this particular situation. Okay? And, and I want you to know something, that your spiritual life is the command center for your attitudes and your disposition. It's your connection with God that, that determines who you are and how you operate in this world. God wants you to be successful. He wants you to be productive. He wants to move through us. And, and he knows that when you stay in communication with him, what happens is you get the mind of Christ. And now the spirit who knows the mind of God and dwells inside of you is now being activated so you're not just operating on your own mind, your own strength. You've got the living God coming alive within you. This is a big deal. In fact, prayer is the Holy Spirit's realm of allowing Jesus to come alive within us. You know, one of my friends, he said whenever he enters into prayer, he says, Lord, it's me again. And I think that's such a cool line. It's me again, Lord. And, and how delightful it is for the Lord to, to have us step in to his presence. But, but he always says it like, well, you know, I'm the one bothering you again. And no, 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 no. The Lord's excited. Hey, I'm glad you're back. Because I don't want you doing life without me. You got a bunch of issues in your life. You've come to the right place. I'm your source. I love you. When you don't know what to do, he's the one you turn to. But, but here's the deal. Prayer requires faith, which is believing that you're not just talking to a wall, but there's somebody else on the other side of this conversation who is involved in your life. James 1.6 makes a powerful statement. If you ask in doubt, you should expect to receive nothing. Oh, it's two ways of praying. Lord, I'd love to see something happen here. And then, Lord, I'd love to see something happen, and therefore, I'm going to get my life in alignment for your movement in my life. There's a story about two farmers that desperately needed rain, and both of them prayed, but only one of them prepared his fields for the rain. Now, both believed in God enough to pray, but one just tossed up a hope. The other prayed with the intention of God showing up, and he prepared his fields and which one do you think is operating in faith? I'm going to suggest farmer number two. And that's what you and I are called to do. Believe that he's there. Anticipate he's going to answer. Step forward what Jesus says. Believe what you have asked for. Now, if it's not what he wants, he's going to make some adjustments inside of you, around you. Okay, He's a good God, but the thing is, we believe and we step forward in the prayer we're offering. Now, I mentioned that prayer is a conversation with God, and that means it's not just a one-way dialogue. How many times you go to prayer and, you know, I spill out everything I want, everything I need, you know, all my opinions, and, and oh, God, do you need any, do you want to speak to me? I, I didn't think so. Okay, have a wonderful day. I'll see you tomorrow, okay? No, 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 no. You go into prayer, and, and you create a space and what happens in the space is usually all of your thoughts will fill the space and you just move them out of the way and focus in. And then the thoughts will come back and you move them out of the way. You focus in. And, you, and then there it is with the Lord. You're ready to hear from him. And, and usually while I'm praying for whatever's on my prayer list, I pause right there so he can guide me in this situation and that situation. I, I, I let it be a dialogue if he wants to speak to me, you know, if he wants to move on my heart, he wants to bring a Bible verse, wants to say something, wants to bring something to my remembrance, 
something's going to happen in prayer. When you step in, you create the space and you anticipate that God is going to speak to you. Now, the problem is, <clears throat> how do I know that it's God? How that it's not, no, that it's just not me wanting something so badly that, did I hear from God that I'm supposed to get that cool-looking new vet? Yeah, I think that might be God's will, okay? How do I know if that's God's will or it's just me? Or worse, what if it's Satan talking to me? You know Satan speaks because, you know... <clears throat> He'll put stuff into your head. You know that pity party that we often throw. I can't believe this is happening to me. God, why did you allow this? You know, nobody likes me. Life is rotten. The world is, is a pit. And, and as we go in all these negative places, guess who's talking to you? Does that sound like God? No. That's the enemy. Whenever you hear the wrong thoughts, just stop, stomp on them, and decide to activate the Lord. You know, he speaks grace and love. He reminds you that you belong to him, that there's a hope for your life, that, that he's, he has empowerment for you to get through and, and move beyond anything that you're facing. And, and the question is, the questions of life, we bring them to him. Lord, what career path should I take? Lord, how should I deal with this situation? Lord, who's going to be my spouse? Uh, the, the little things. Lord, what should I wear? I remember in college one time I went out with this woman and, and we were having our meal and she said to me, yeah, I asked God what I should wear for this date. And she had this frumpy sweater on. I'm like, wow, God, thanks, you know. <laughs> but first and foremost, God's going to speak through the Bible, his word. He's never going to give you advice that contradicts his word. That's why I always want you reading the Bible, so that the Holy Spirit can pull down His Word for whatever situation that you're in. Another thing to ask is that famous statement, what would Jesus do? You know, you're in, I don't know, I could do it this way, I can do it that way. What would Jesus do? Because suddenly your selfish ambitions and your selfish promotion are going to become quite evident. You know, I've never quoted from the message Bible before, but today is a historic moment. In Philippians 2, 3, it says this, don't push your way to the front. Don't sweet talk your way to the top. Put yourself aside. Help others get ahead. Don't be obsessed with getting your own advantage. Forget yourselves long enough to lend a helping hand. Think of yourselves the way Jesus Christ thought of himself. What a great description of, of what Philippians 2 says. And what that means is in motion, you pause and consider are the fruits of the Spirit being activated in my life? Love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, gentleness, faithfulness, self-control. Are these things being put into motion with this person or as I'm approaching whatever circumstance I, I, I'm, I'm after? Well, there's something else that you have to consider when the Lord speaks to you and you're not sure about it. Talk to other Christians. Okay? Realize that when you became a Christian, new relationships happened. Jesus became your Savior, God became your Father, and we became a family. In fact, there was a moment when the first thing God said that was bad, it is not good for man to be alone. Relational uh, situations is what we need. This is what God wants for us. In fact, there are over 30 scriptures that tell Christians to care for one another, love one another, encourage one another, pray for one another, teach one another. When you hear a voice and you're not sure, is this God or is this Satan or is this me? Talk to another Christian and they'll say, let me hear it. And, and then now where two or more are gathered, Christ is in your midst, the mind of Christ is going to be released, and the wisdom of God is going to now direct your path. I love Proverbs 27, 17, as iron sharpens iron, so does one person sharpen another. And by the way, other people need to be on your prayer list. You should have a list of folks that you are lifting up before the Lord, people who need a healing touch people that you need to forgive, people that are struggling, folks that, that are important to you, people that you don't like, 
But if God brings him to mind, you put him on the prayer list, you lift him before the Lord, and now he's being activated. You're standing in the gap. There's this cool passage in Ezekiel where the Lord says, I looked for somebody to stand in the gap and there was no one. And if you're the person stepping forward, he's going to get excited because he, this is what it means to follow him, to be the caretaker of the people in your sphere of influence, the spiritual caretaker. Well, <clears throat> another question you have to ask, is this the Lord? Is this consistent with who I am? The other day somebody says, you know, Pastor, I feel like the Lord's he's calling me to be part of the Christian band, the praise band. And I said, really? I mean, do you play an instrument? I said, no. I said, do you even listen to Christian music? No. Well, what makes you think that you're going to be part of the Christian band? He goes, well, I saw this Elvis movie. I'm like, no, 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 that's not the Lord, Okay. Here's the deal. Sometimes stuff will come to our heads and we're like, oh, yeah, I see it. I believe it. And, and, you know, God has given you abilities. He's given you a skill set. He's given you a personality. And that's usually where you're supposed to, to move. Now, he does call us out of our comfort zone regularly. He does ask you to do things you don't want to do. But as you step into it, as you go forward, suddenly what happens is you get empowered and he opens doors and he does transformation and, and what you thought could never happen is suddenly occurring in abundance. It's amazing. But there's one important move that happens in prayer that I want to address right now. When you're hearing from God, does it convict or does it condemn? You see, conviction is from God, condemnation is from Satan. Conviction points the way to change, condemnation just makes you feel bad. Okay? When God convicts you of sin, it's always, you're blowing it, let me help you fix it and get you whole. Okay? Condemnation, it just comes along and says, you're bad, you're no good, you're worthless, you stink. Okay, these thoughts don't come from God. Conviction always leads to the, boss, the possibility of change. Condemnation always makes you feel hopeless. And Christian, I need you to remember Romans 8.1. There is no condemnation for those who are in Christ Jesus. So when you're in prayer and all of a sudden condemnation starts rolling in, you remind yourself this isn't from the Lord because he only has encouragement in mind for me and, and correction for my benefit. You know, and, and sometimes Christians, we should feel guilty. We've blown it. But the Holy Spirit doesn't come alongside and, and, and <clears throat> you know, orchestrate that you now feel miserable forever. No, he connects you to the Father who's the source of healing. And you know, I had a cool experience this past week. Somebody reminded me that your sin was paid for in a way that is an overpayment. <laughs> you know, where sin increased, grace abounds. So whatever you got wrong, his grace meets you. You never deserve it. It's nothing you would ever earn. It's just that awe-inspiring moment when you realize the love of God is incomprehensible. And by the way, this is called confession. And confession is a big part of your prayer life. It's where you take a self-awareness inventory and say, Lord, and he usually say, you mishandled this. You shouldn't have said that. I need you to start the other. It's this great place where God comes alive and makes the adjustments that, that are needed within us. And, and friends, I want to tell you, in the prayer life, there's nothing more dynamic than hearing from God. He's not going to play a game of hide and seek, you know. He wants you to find him. He wants you to know him. But sometimes it takes some energy. Sometimes it takes some effort. It takes getting out of bed early. It takes meeting every day, you know, and, and, and God will be moving in your life until finally, boom, the moment that you're seeking him comes available to you. And the, the key for you and me is to listen for God's voice. You know, FDR, he was president, you know, for a long time, right? Didn't he have four terms? And, and so he realized that, you know, he'd have these diplomatic situations and you know, he'd have to shake everybody's hand, and nobody was listening to him. He could tell nobody, you know. So he decides one day to say, I murdered my grandmother this morning. 
And people are going through the line, and he would say that, and they'd go, oh, isn't that special, you know? Yeah, they, they, they were just, you know, how lovely, that's nice. And, you know, he's like, nobody's listening. So there's one diplomat, he, he says, I murdered my grandmother this morning. It was the diplomat from Colombia who looked both ways and said, I'm sure she got what she deserved, okay? <laughs> And, and, and God's leaning in and he's whispering to us. And the question is, are you listening? Because maybe he's saying, you know, I, I want you to forgive this person. Or I, I want you to accept the fact that you're loved. It's nothing you're going to earn. I, I want you to change your attitude. He, he's whispering in so that we walk with him hand in hand and go through life and, and in, in this beautiful way. This is what prayer brings about for you and me. And the secret is staying connected to him daily. You know, some people check in with God when they need something. Thanks, I'll see you the next time I need something. No, you miss the friendship. You know, when people call me on the phone, I, they don't even have to tell me who they are. I know their voice. We have a relationship. And, and there's been special moments in my life when God said something and I knew it was him. There's this, there's, for me and him, there's this particular way he speaks to me. And I'm like, okay, this one is not just me. And, and, and it's for all of us because in, in John 10, 27, my sheep hear my voice and I know them and they follow me. And this is where I want you to get. And this, it takes a prayer life, but out of the prayer life, you move mountains. Your prayers get answered. You get close to God. And by the way, six times in the Bible, Jesus promises he will answer our prayers. So, so why is it that we don't pray? Well, sometimes <clears throat> we're all full of ourselves. I don't need God. I can do it on my own. You know, so you're, let's just think about this. You're going to bypass Almighty God who loves you and who is your source and who knows things, and you'll just take care of business, okay? Wow, to cut off, you know, the, the partnership of God. Bad move. Another one is bitterness. Whenever we get hurt, we have a choice. We can become bitter or we can become better. And a bitter person, they'll stop listening to God, okay? They'll build walls. They'll hide in a shell, They'll blame God, and they'll make God the enemy when actually Jesus is the source of healing. Another thing that all of us fall for is worries, okay? And we go to prayer, and, and we're so distracted and, and, and preoccupied, and we've come to talk to God, and all we're doing is thinking about everything that we're worried about, okay? And, and I want you to know something. The Greek word for worry means to be pulled in a different direction, and you go into God's presence, and we get pulled in a different direction. And friends, we have to recognize, wait a minute, I'm bringing this worry to him. I don't want it to take over my mind and, and, and just add yet another place for me to get nervous and upset and fearful. By the way, worry is placing more faith in Satan's ability to hurt you than in God's ability to help you. This is important for you to hear. Well, how about us busy people? Okay? We get up in the morning, we run to work, we get everything done, we're exhausted by the end of the day, we go to sleep and get up and do it again and again. And maybe God gets the leftovers of, of our life, but I want you to know that hurry is the death of prayer. That's why the Lord says, be still and know that I am God. Find a spot where you're going to meet with Him, where you're going to talk to Him. And you know, it might be that quiet place in the backyard porch. It could be in the midst of the chaos around you where you just tune everything out and talk to him. For me, I write stuff down, okay? I, I find that this helps me stay focused. My mind will just get so crazy, and I'll just say, okay, let me write things down so that I can stay on target, so that I can stay in conversation, so that I can communicate with the Lord. Well, one more thing. When the Lord speaks to us, it says in John 14, 26, the counselor, the Holy Spirit, who the Father is going to send in my name, will teach you all things and remind you of everything I told you. 
And, and, and this is so special. You're in prayer, and he'll bring a Bible verse to you. You're talking to the Lord, and he'll remind you of something that he already said to you. And, and sometimes when you're in prayer, and you don't know what to say, this is so cool. Romans 8.26, the Spirit prays for us. Those moments when you go, ah, oh, Lord, and you don't know what to say, he speaks on our behalf. It's just the most beautiful place for you to be. So, how do we pray? Adoration. Wow. Almighty God who created everything. You're interested in my life. You're unbelievable. You're amazing. And what it does is it centers you. Because when you realize who he is, suddenly whatever problem you have, he can handle it. And then you move to the confession where you get real with the Lord. Realize he wants to heal you from all of the negative stuff that has impacted your life. Petition, where you stand in the gap and you pray for other people. This is the prayer warrior side of us, where we're fighting for people and the Lord gets excited when we don't just get self-oriented, but we fight other people's spiritual battles in prayer. And thanksgiving. Make sure you're always being thankful. I thank him for the problems that I have because that drives me into his presence and then I get excited about how he's going to move and so guess what? Even my problems become fodder for thankfulness. And by the way, not just your problems, all the amazing gifts of grace and, and provisions that he, he, he extends to us. If you don't offer thanks, you start to get an entitlement attitude, and you end up eschewed with God. But most of all, when you pray, you get to experience the supernatural presence of the living God coming alive in your life. Heavenly Father, I thank you for prayer. This communication that you established so that when we step into your presence, we can lay before you what's on our hearts and we can hear what's on yours. Well, we learn how great thou art and we cry out for that amazing grace where we see the power of Jesus released. Oh Lord, may we never miss a prayer moment. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. I invite you to stand as we call on the name of the Lord one more time. I'm calling on the God of Jacob, whose love endures through generations. I know that you will keep your covenant. Do we? 
want you to have a prayer life. Find five, 10, 15 minutes. If, you're, if you don't, then step into it and you're going to see that this will become your favorite part of your day. He loves you. He's ready to meet with you and move in your life. So go forward and have a God week. Amen.